welcome to Financial Brew. My name is Candace, and I'll be your guide today as we look a little bit deeper into the financial verse. Uh, in today's video, we're going to talk about grocery stores. We're going to talk about ways you can go shopping and actually save a little bit of money when you're picking up your groceries. We'll talk about some of those elusive little uh, tricks that they employ at the grocery store to steal a little bit more money from you before you leave. Uh, we're going to cover all of that today and much more. Before we get right into the content though, let's very quickly check in with my co-host, the adorable Blaze. Blaze, what's going on? Well, I guess Blaze is having a nap. Well, apparently cats like that. Cats like to nap. So let's get right into uh, our content. So we're going to talk a little bit about grocery stores here today and how you can save some money. I have seven tips that are going to help you out. The first two tips are things that you do before you even get into the grocery store. So the very first tip is to make a shopping list. Shopping lists are hugely important because they will keep you focused when you're in the store. What the grocery store wants you to do is they want you wandering around looking at stuff and running into their impulse buys because that's how they fill your cart and they're their goal basically is they want you to to leave with more items in your cart than you intended to a shopping list will really really help this so make that shopping list and you know what because sometimes there's always that one of you or maybe more who's like Candace 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 I don't need a shopping list I can remember what I need and that may be true you may remember what you need like let's say you need um, you're going in to pick up milk eggs, uh, bacon, butter, and oh, toothpicks. So you go in there and it's like, oh, here's the milk. Oh yeah, over there, grab the eggs. Um, what else do I need? Oh yeah, butter right here. Oh, oh, and bacon. Who can forget bacon? Oh, wait a minute. There was one other thing. What do I need? What do I need? Um, um, what, what? Ooh, chips. Next thing you know, the chips is in the bag. And you may find a few other things before you, you realize, oh yeah, it was toothpicks. That's how they get you. Because as you're hunting around looking for an item that you're not sure what it is, trying to jog your memory, well, you're going to be encountering lots of buying opportunities. And not buying opportunities in your favor, but in the store's favor. And once again, you will leave with more things in your cart than you meant to. So the shopping list is important. It is your focus. Now, the second one, and this works with a shopping list in a way, is uh, you really want to be checking the store's weekly flyer. If you know you're going to Superstore, look at their weekly flyer before you go. Why this is important is that, yes, most of the things on sale, you will get the sale price anyway. Um, except for occasionally there might be a coupon which you can grab and save something but here's where it's important let's say for example uh, in the flyer ketchup's on sale and you weren't planning to get ketchup this time but your ketchup is getting low well gosh darn it put the ketchup on your shopping list that's why you should be checking these flyers because it's you know it's, it's a good thing or in some situations, if you check multiple stores, let's say uh, uh, you check the Safeway and you, you know you check the Superstore and uh, IGA or whatever stores you have locally, if one of them happens to have a lot of a good lot of good sales on items that you need, well, perhaps that's a store you should be going to. Makes sense that way because your goal is to spend as little as you can to still get what you need, obviously. So. Between checking your list, almost sounds like a Santa Claus thing, but between making your list and checking the flyers, um, you're ready now to go to the store. Now, once you get to the store, the plangram, the way these stores are set up, they are set up to get you to put more stuff in your cart. So what you're going to do is you're going to beat them at their own game by sticking to the perimeter. Along the perimeter of the store, that's where all of the main staples are. So that's where you're going to find things, you know, like your meat, your fish, your vegetables, 
So what I will generally do is I'll stick to the main perimeter, and then if I need something in an aisle, so let's say I need coffee, I'll just mosey on down aisle three, grab my coffee, and get right back out. Never do the up and down every aisle, because then you are pretty much guaranteed to run into almost every single trap they have set up for you. Maybe you've got the willpower to not give in to them, but you know that display of chips might just look too tempting. And you know what? If you really wanted chips, it would have been on the list. Think about that. If it's not on the list, you don't need it. The only exception, of course, is if you see something that you do regularly buy, and it is on sale, and it's not something that was in their flyer, then absolutely grab, you know, grab it in that case, because it will save you money in the long term. Okay, so when you do have to go into the aisles, and this would be tip number four, the way they set up the aisles is all the things they make the most money on, they will put eye level. Those are the things you're looking directly at and are more likely to buy. The items that are more cost effective for you, meaning they make less money on them, they will usually put on the top and the bottom of the shelves. So when you are in there, always look at the top, always look at the bottom, because there are going to be opportunities for you to lower that grocery bill just by shopping from the top and the bottom. Okay, so that's the aisles. Now, the other big thing is when you can buy in bulk, you will generally save money. And this is actually true with things like meat. So if you were to go buy a steak, you're going to pay for it. You know, you're going to pay a good amount. But if you were to buy a family pack that has, you know, three of those same steaks in it or four of those same steaks in it, when you break down how much you pay per steak, you save you know, you can save a considerable amount of money. Uh, what you would have to do, of course, is make sure you have freezer bags so that you can split it apart, freeze some of it. Oh, and don't be that person. Don't be that person who puts things in their freezer and forgets about them, and then six months later they decide to clean up the freezer and they're throwing a bunch of meat in the garbage because it's all frozen burn and not really, you know, not really appetizing or looks like something you wanted to frost and try to eat. So don't be that person. Stay organized when it comes to your freezer. Always a good thing. Organization can never steer you wrong. That's for sure. Okay. So that was uh, that was tip number five. So tip number six is we're gonna we're gonna come all the way back to coupons again. So I know we mentioned that sometimes there's a coupon in um, some of the weekly fires, although most of the times you don't see them as much as you used to. Uh, as well, when you first come in the store, sometimes you'll find coupons and things like that on their bulletin board at the in the opening, usually lobby part of the store. So it's always good to check that. Uh, some companies will even put online coupons as well. These are worth your while because you will save money. Um, if you ever if you ever check out extreme couponing, uh, I think there's different shows about extreme couponing in the states. Um, I've seen situations where a woman would go into a store with all of this you know, big f folder of coupons and she'd get like, you know, two, three hundred dollars worth of groceries in her cart and uh, after applying all the coupons, the store owed her 50 cents. It's like, who does that? I want to do that, but, you know, I don't think, at least where I'm located in Canada, I don't think we have quite as many coupons floating around as is what you would get in these extreme coupon shows. But you know what? Don't be afraid to use them. They will save you money. They will absolutely save you money. Okay, so that was uh, that was coupons. Now, the final trap is all about those free samples. You'll see them set up there, and it's like, oh, yeah, free samples. You'll go, you'll have it, and it'll taste good. You know, they, they cook them up nice. And usually that person is sitting there and they've got a whole bunch of that product right there. These products are almost never on sale. Pretty much. They're also high markup. Because what they want to do is as you've eaten it, you're like, oh, you know, I should probably, it is good, I should get it. Well, don't. <laughs> Free samples 
are a impulse buy trap. They're a very tasty impulse buy trap. Now, if you can eat it without feeling that peer pressure to buy it, fine. Or if it is an item that you absolutely do need, then fine, go for it then as well. So definitely, definitely try to avoid the free samples, stick to your outer perimeters, do all of those things, and you're going to save a lot of money. The whole goal really is to not be spending money that you really don't need to spend. I'm not saying that you have to be a minimalist, though there's nothing wrong with that, but you know, knock, knock down on grocery bills. Don't spend more than you have to. And it just takes a, it takes a little work um, to do some of these tips. But once they become habit, you'll just be saving money hand over fist. And that's money you can use for investing. Well, as we've reached the end of the video, I want to thank you very much for, for sticking around to the end. Um, be sure to hit the like and subscribe as well as that bell if you want to be notified when I have new videos. Also, I've got links down below for uh, my affiliate links, so for Wealth Simple as well as Shake Pay. We've also got the Friends of the Channel, so Hi Rye and the Dancers, definitely worth checking out. Also, a new link down below is for our Facebook group. So if you want to join, um, if you want to join our Facebook group, um, it's very simple to hit the link below or you know, do a search on uh, Financial Brew and it will come up. It is a private group, so um, definitely come on in and uh, we can start some, com we can take the conversation from YouTube and expand it. <laughs> so it's gonna be a wonderful community, uh, especially with you in it. So until next time, uh, take care and I will see you in the financial verse.